بسم اللہ الرحمٰن رحیم میں السلام علیکم پاکستان سعید حسین ہے دا بیک ود کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ وی آر موونگ آن ٹو اے نیو چیپٹر اینڈ دا چیپٹر از اباؤٹ گڈ کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ آبلیگیشنز ٹو سوسائٹی لیڈیز اینڈ جنرمن ناؤ ڈے از نو کمپنی کین ورک ان آئسولیشن کمپنیز کین ناٹ اونلی کنسڈر اباؤٹ دی انٹرسٹ آف دا شیئر ہولڈر اینڈ ٹرائی ٹو اونلی میکسیمائز پروفٹس ایٹ اینی کاسٹ ناؤ وی آلسو ٹاک اباؤٹ دا فیکٹ that companies and corporates have to be obligated to society. Now, when we are talking about good governance and trying to dovetail the context of corporate governance, then we can see that there is a bridge which tends to interface between both of them. The terms governance and good governance are being increasingly used in development literature. Bad governance is being recognized now as one of the root causes of corrupt practices in our societies. So, ladies and gentlemen, the, the curse of the 20th century is corruption. Corruption of individuals, corruption of institutions, corruption of communities, corruption of dealing, and this tends to undermine the very ethos of business and corporate culture. So, therefore, when we talk about national contextualization of corruption, or the corporate contextualization of corruption, then both of these elements are extremely detrimental to a nation, to a community, to a society, to individuals, and to institutions. Therefore, it is extremely important that we curb this curse of corruption at every cost. And all stakeholders have to get together to curb and to limit, to constrain this phenomena of corruption which is spreading through our society. Major donors, institutional investors and international financial institutions provide their aid and loans on the condition that reforms that ensure good governance are put in place by the recipient nations. So it is, it is very evident that if any nation needs financing, needs support, then it will have to move towards good governance frameworks and good governance structures. Without that, it's just like that a bank is giving a loan to someone who is known to be corrupt, who is known to defraud institutions of finances, who is known to default on loans, and yet a bank gives the loan. So what will become of it? It will just be wasted. So again, when we are looking at the context of good governance, then we have to see, as with nations, corporations too are expected to provide good governance to benefit all their stakeholders. And that is what we have been talking about. In all of these sessions, since the very beginning, we have been emphasizing on the need of stakeholders, of equitable distribution, of finances, of resources, of profits, to ensure a inclusive policy whereby everyone becomes a beneficiary, whereby everyone becomes responsible for the overall performance of the organization and tends to move ahead with, with merit, uh, with consensual decision making, uh, with uh, value based leadership, with the determination not to compromise on quality and not to compromise on the very essence of corporate governance and move forward either as a entity or as a nation. And that is very, very important, ladies and gentlemen. At the same time, good corporates are not born, but are made by the combined efforts of all the stakeholders, which include the shareholders or the investors, the board of directors, employees, customers, dealers, government, the society at home. So all of these different elements get together to ensure that there is good governance and corporate governance taking place so that no one's rights are infringed, no one's benefits are encroached, no one takes undue advantage of each other. This is extremely important in good governance. Law and regulation alone cannot bring about changes in corporates. 
to behave better to benefit all concerned. It is the directors and management as guided by stakeholders and inspired by societal values. This tends to play a very big role. So the values of society are extremely important. And that is where integrity education, professional ethics, code of conducts become very important. And that is why organizations like the United, Office for, United Nations Office for Drugs and Crime are propelling forward an initiative like the Global Integrity Education Program, which is right now being run in Mexico, Kenya, and Pakistan. And in Pakistan, 95 top faculty members have been trained and certified from institutions like UCP, like LUMS, like University of Lahore, like UMT, like FAST, like Punjab University. And now they are forging ahead to inculcate those values in the future leaders of tomorrow so that they can be more responsible. in their decision making, in their approach, and in their demeanor. That is extremely important. And the company and its officers who include the board of directors and the officials, especially the senior management should strictly follow the code of conduct, which I was talking about, for fulfilling obligations towards different stakeholders. Now, most of the time what happens is that the code of conduct is not even known by the board, is not even known by the employees. but there is a code of conduct. So what is that? Is that code of conduct just an ornamental piece of beautiful English or Urdu? Or is it that that code of conduct is practiced and implemented in spirit and essence? That is what is required, ladies and gentlemen. So the code of conduct cannot just be a document which is available, but has to be a living document. A living document which is implemented in totality. across the stakeholders and it has to be an organic document so that with the passage of time it tends to incorporate the, the changes pledged by society and does not become an antiquated piece of legislation or rules or regulation. That is what is required to move towards good governance and to move towards corporate governance. In the obligation of society, the first interest is the national interest, not undertaking any project or activity detrimental to a nation's interest, to conduct business in consonance with the economic development of the country. You not, cannot go against the various aspects of economics. You cannot go against government policy. You cannot start contradicting the, the laws of the land. It is very important that for economic development, there is a consonance, there is a understanding between the corporate sector and the public sector. And more importantly, the following of rules. Political non-alignment. Corporations should not align themselves to any political party. They should be apolitical. A company should be committed and support a functioning democratic constitution. Systems. with a transparent and fair electoral system. And they should not directly or indirectly try to support any political party or candidate for any political office. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is extremely important to be politically non-aligned and to be apolitical. In legal compliances, there has to be compliance with all applicable government laws, rules, and regulations. They're everyone with appropriate knowledge of the legal requirements relating to their duties. This should be understood and comprehended and implemented. Criminal civil liability as well as disciplinary action for violation. Corporations should abide by the law of the taxes of the country. So these are the legal compliances and obligations which must be met. They cannot be compromised. They cannot be compromised. Whatever laws they are. They have to be followed in spirit and essence and through implementation. There can be no interpretation which is detrimental to the overall structure of the nation or society. It has to be commensurate. It has to be conducive. 
it has to dovetail with the national contextualization. Then there is rule of law. Unfortunately, what we see is that nowadays there is rule of the law, O double F. It should be the single F. Good governance requires fair legal frameworks that are enforced impartially, diligently, equitably, transparently. It also requires full protection of rights, particularly those of minority shareholders. Impartial enforcement of laws require an independent judiciary and regulatory authority. So, look at the role of the SECP, the Securities Exchange Commission of Pakistan. Look at the role of the Federal Bureau of Revenue. Look at the role of NADRA. Look at the role of anti-corruption agencies. Look at the role of uh, the different registration offices. Look at the role of the different government agencies which are involved with business. It is necessary that they are impartial. It is necessary that they comprehend the different steps and stages of business. So they do not suffocate business, but actually they facilitate business. And that is their role. Remaining within the rule of law, honest and ethical conduct. Every officer of a company should deal on behalf of the company with professionalism, honesty, commitment and sincerity as well as high moral and ethical standards. So right is right and wrong is wrong. You cannot start justifying a wrong. And you cannot start feeding a right. So therefore, the conduct of an employee is extremely important, especially in the conduct, in the context of honesty. Honest conduct is a conduct that is free from fraud or deception. Ethical conduct is an ethical handling of actual or apparent conflicts between the personal and the professional relationship. So they should be in harmony between the personal and professional relationship. Otherwise, it would create distortion, it would create stress, depression, and a deprivation of productivity of the organization or corporate institution. So again, ladies and gentlemen, what we see is, is that we cannot compromise on integrity, on ethics, on accountability, on transparency, on equitable distribution, on compassion, because all of us are human. And humanity is not about unbridled profitability. Humanity is about togetherness. Humanity is about kindness. Humanity is about empathy. Humanity is about sympathy. Humanity is about giving hope to each other, supporting each other in bad times. Humanity is about creating holistic solutions and holistic products which cater to the needs of society. And that is what good governance and corporate governance are all about. Thank you so much.